All right. I think that's better. Yes? Maybe. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yay. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And welcome to the Sacred Pathway Academy podcast. Ooh. With me, Allison Rozelle. I am the spiritual liberation coach. And I am also a Yusui Reiki master healer and teacher. And there they are, looking for my cards. <laughs> um, I am also the founder and headmistress of the Sacred Pathway Academy, to which we have a podcast that represents the Academy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and right now, you can get enrolled for Embody the Reiki Master Within where you can get certified in Yusui Reiki. Yes, you can at master level. So I teach levels one, two, and master. All right. This is a six-week course where you can come in uh, and get taught how to do Reiki. Um, yeah, it's really exciting. Um, I love it. I love teaching Reiki. I love talking about Reiki. I love giving Reiki. This week, I'm going to be talking more about Reiki and um, why I like this Reiki life. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll be doing that this week. And what else? What else? What else? What else? There's a couple other things, but I can't think of them right now. So, let's just go ahead and move right on along. So, happy August at the time of this recording. It is now the 1st of August, which means this is my birth month. Woo! Yes, yes, yes. So, it's my the month of my birth. So, my birthday is on the 11th, and I... Look forward to my birthday. Don't really know what I'm doing. Don't really know. Just know that I am going to take next week off. Mm hmm So that I can rest. I can relax. I can celebrate. I can do whatever I want. Because it's my birthday. It's the birthday. And I'll be real honest with y'all. See, a lot of people celebrate their birthday like the whole month. And I used to do that. But when I got like later in the month, it stopped feeling, I stopped feeling celebratory. And I finally figured out why. I'm going to get real comfortable so I can say this. Now, this is no shade to nobody, okay? I just need y'all to understand. No shade. I personally start celebrating the time Leo season hits. That's right. I go from the beginning of Leo season to the end of Leo season, and that's when I celebrate. I don't do the whole month thing. Some people do, but I don't. I start celebrating on what is July's 22nd. <laughs> See, the 22nd or the 23rd, whenever Leo season starts. That's when I start celebrating. I start celebrating. I start like strutting my stuff, looking like um, Simba on The Lion King when he used to kind of strut around with Pumbaa and uh, <laughs> Timon. <laughs> uh, yes. So um, it's Leo season and I make no bones about it. All right. So enough about that silliness with me, you know. I'm always going to do something silly. So let's continue our conversation. So we've been talking about the different chakras. Every week we've talked about, um, we've gotten up to, now we're at number five. So we've done four previously. So let's recap. We talked about the root. We talked about sacral chakra. 
We talked about the solar plexus. We were flexing in our plexus. <laughs> we talked about the heart chakra and our imagination, allowing ourselves to be open, to use our imagination, to allow ourselves to open up and feel love and compassion in the lives that we've always dreamed of to manifest. That's right. So for this week, we're going to talk about the throat chakra. And we're going to do a reading. I Usually when I do a reading, I'll have the three cards already in front of me. But I was running a little behind, so I didn't get a chance to do that. So we're going to pull them. <laughs> we're, <coughs> excuse me, actually going to pull them. And today I'm going to use, and I have my, um, my goddess sister, uh, Giovanna, to think thank for this because I was wondering what cards I was going to use for this week's reading and lo and behold I scroll onto Instagram and I see that she is using one of my first decks um, which is the One Manifesting Fertility Goddess deck. Never mind the chip nail polish <laughs> by Abiola Abrams. So I figured that would be awesome to use since this is an affirmation deck and we are talking about the throat chakra. Why not exercise the throat chakra by speaking some affirmations? Yeah, how about that? So the throat chakra is located here in the neck area and it is your voice. It is you speaking your truth. It is you living your most authentic life. So with the throat chakra, I always teach that the throat chakra, and this is just my opinion, okay? This isn't like somebody might have taught on it before and I just haven't run across it yet. But for me personally, it stands to reason that the solar plexus and the uh, throat chakra kind of work together. They kind of work together. Because the solar plexus is all about your identity, you uh, standing in your personal power, you being confident, right? Um, and the throat chakra is all about you speaking your truth, you living your most authentic life, you standing in your purpose and actually both of them have something to do with you being and standing and embracing your purpose so that's why to me they work together in they're kind of in cahoots so you know if one is off i would suspect the other one is as well um and there have been times where i've known that to be true where i've had someone that I'm giving Reiki to and I feel their throat chakra is a little off. And so then when I get to their solar plexus, that's also a little off. So um, it can happen. It can happen. And I think that person is the reason why I feel so strongly about them being connected the way that they are and how they kind of um, play off of each other. So what we're going to do is our um, reading for the week. And what we want to know is, what do we need to know <laughs> for this week regarding our throat chakra? We also want to know what do we need to do about it? So, you know, there's always an action. So what I like to explain to people when it comes to using divination um especially in the realm of cards, whether it's oracle cards or even tarot cards or tarot, however you pronounce. Um, they're going to give you an action to take. You know, it's, it's very rare that I've ever been where I've ever witnessed a reading. And I'm not talking about like a one card pool, but like a full on reading where you're not going to get some kind of instruction of what you need to do. If you look on any card spread, there's always an action for you to take 
so that you can move forward. So I think they're shuffled enough. Um, so that's the thing with getting readings. And what I like for people to understand is <clears throat> the reading. Um, someone explained this, excuse me, on Clubhouse. And it's actually someone that I am friends with. <laughs> and I did um, a reading uh, room with her. Um, it was actually three of us, the spiritual mamas. So if you are on Clubhouse, we should be doing another gathering on Tuesday night, I believe it is. But I'll post about it on Insta and Facebook. Um, and follow me on Clubhouse as well. Because now Clubhouse is open to everybody. So don't be sitting up there be like, well, I can't get on there. It's open to everybody now. So, <laughs> it's not quite as exclusive as it once was, and that's okay. Um, so, what she had explained was the same thing that I know to be true. It's not necessarily the cards. The cards are the prop for which we use to... Uh, give you the message from spirit. So this is the way I'm I'm thinking. See, that's how my brain works, I'm going to tell you. So imagine, if you will, that the cards are the bus. And I, the card reader, am the bus driver. Well, me and the bus can't do nothing unless we have the flow of the spirit. So that's the gasoline, right? <laughs> so what makes the cards go, what makes me go um, as the person speaking that message is spirit. So it all flows from spirit. I know that's probably a crazy analogy to you, but it sounded good in my head. So I thought I'd share it. But anyway. So yes, um, so what do we need to know? What do we need to do? And then the last card is what will be the outcome? So if we do act on what we know, right? If we're acting on what we know to be true, according to what the cards are prescribing and saying, because remember, these card readings are more prescriptive than predictive, right? So if we act on it, what's going to be the outcome to all this? So let's find out. Are you ready? <laughs> all right. So what do we need to know? What do we need to know? And you know what? I really did need to shuffle these cards because I haven't pulled them in a while. So I'm kind of glad that I did do that shuffle. Mm, I feel like I need to keep shuffling. So what do we need to know regarding the throat chakra? And this card just jumps right on out. <laughs> All right. So this is Goddess Oshun. Goddess Oshun. Sacred beauty. And it says, I am a divine daughter, blessed mother, and a sacred bombshell. So what we need to know, or rather our block, right, is maybe we haven't been stepping into the power and affirming that we are divine beings, right? So Goddess Oshun is coming to let us know, hi, Goddess, to let us know that we are divine daughters, that we are sacred bombshells, that we are the she's knit, but somehow within our blocks we've forgotten it and we're not affirming it so what we need to know this week regarding the throat chakra is don't forget that you are a divine daughter and a sacred bombshell and a blessed mother now a blessed mother does not necessarily mean that you physically have children all women are we are the energy of the womb 
which is the sacral chakra area, is a very um, sacred place for us because it's the place of creation. So whether you have actual physical children, human children or not, you are a blessed mother. Why? Because you have the power to create. Whether you are giving birth to babies, giving birth to your book, giving birth to your new life, giving book birth, giving book, giving birth to uh, whatever it is that you can imagine. That's why you are a blessed mother. So it doesn't necessarily mean blessed mother as in having children. It means blessed mother as being a woman who is able to birth her dreams into reality. But you got to be able to speak it first, first. And stand on that power within the throat chakra and affirm, yes, this is who I am. And damn who about anybody that don't like it. <laughs> so that's card number one. So that's what we need to know. So the next card is what do we need to do? So if we've been slipping on that affirmation, right? If we haven't been affirming it, if we've been forgetting that that's who we are. Now, what do we need to do to correct that? What do we need to do to correct it? So that we can stand in that, in that Mama Oshun energy. All right. Okay. <laughs> I love it. So we get Goddess Anahita. And it is alignment. Ooh, one of my favorite words, alignment. I always say, do what is right and aligned for you. Your sacred alignment, your divine alignment. Alignment is key in this spiritual walk. Yes, yes. So this goddess is coming to tell us, I am enough. I am enough. My energies are balanced and aligned with nature. I am enough. My energies are balanced and aligned with nature. Alignment. So if Mama Oshun just told us that we need to remember because we, we're forgetting that's the block because we, we don't, we're walking around like we don't know. We're walking around like we don't know that we are a divine daughter right that we are also a blessed mother and a sacred bombshell well then this goddess says well in order for you to fix that that little memory lapse that you got where you're not affirming with your throat chakra she's coming along and, and saying um first of all you need to stand on the fact that you are enough you are enough just as you are just as you are, you are enough. You are not too little. You are not too much. You are enough. You are aligned. Sometimes people will tell you, girl, you too much. You too much. You too much. Listen, as a Leo, I'm constantly told that I'm too much. Of something my personality is too big or you know I use songs too much to you know make my point or whatever but you know what I learned a long time ago damn them people okay <laughs> I am that who I am and I don't have to apologize and I'm not gonna for who I am who I am is enough I am divinely divinely aligned. I am divinely appointed and anointed. I am enough and so are you. My energies are balanced and aligned with nature, meaning we are one with Mother Earth. We tap into the divine mother of Mother Earth and we are connected with her, mind, body, and spirit. We work within the elements. Did we not realize and understand that the elements are in us? 
the root chakra, earth. Isn't that an element? The sacral chakra, water. Isn't that an element? The solar plexus, fire. Another element. The heart chakra, air. The throat chakra, ether. You are enough. You, for, you might have forgotten. You let somebody push you off your, your throne for just a little while. Where you forgot that you are a divine daughter. And a sacred bombshell. And a blessed mother. And a highly exalted mystic ruler. <laughs> but this goddess is saying, look. Okay. So let's bring it back all to bring all of it back to perspective. You're divinely connected to Mother Earth. Therefore, you are aligned. You are right where you need to be. So what's the outcome? I like this reading. <laughs> what's the outcome? If we go back to remembrance of what Mama Oshun is telling us of us being divinely, being a divine daughter. If we take action in reminding ourselves and if we are not in alignment with Mother Nature, guess what? You can get yourself aligned. The ways that you can get yourself realigned and reconnected to Mother Nature is to get out there in nature. Get out there in nature. Now, listen. Right about now, here in Georgia, we've been having some serious heat. Now, I don't want you to go outside and have a heat stroke. Take you some water if you're going to go. But if you can go at like right when the sun is coming up or when the sun is going down, go outside long enough to put either your hands or your feet on Mother Earth. Don't step on no ant hills. Because I say that because we live in Georgia here and there's ants everywhere. <laughs> Georgia is, is on top of one big ant hill, I swear. But touch Mother Earth. Reconnect. Take some deep breaths. Let her talk to you. Commune with you. And you commune with her. That will reconnect you with nature. Yeah, it will. So the outcome. Truth. Can't make this up. Ending on this word on the throat chakra. Come on through. Spirit. Yes. Truth. Now I can't say this goddess's name. But the card is gorgeous, and I've always thought it was gorgeous. I love it. The word is truth. The throat chakra is about you living in your truth, speaking your truth, being your truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth, Ruth. <laughs> and it says, great things happen when I embrace my truth and authenticity. Mm. Oh, yes. Great things happen when I embrace my truth and authenticity. So the outcome is that great things will come to you. God will withhold no good thing from you. Because you are embracing your truth and authenticity. One thing that I always teach, that it is, you know, Christians, you know, God bless them, always talk about sin this and sin that. But you know what's more of a sin in my eyes? You not living your truth. You not being the person that God created you to be. 
if God created you to be this person, why are you not being that person? That, in my mind, is a sin. And I won't even use something as judgmental as the word sin. I'll just say, that's not good. <laughs> that's that's um, not even delicately an insult to the creator. Because think of it like this. If we were made in the image of God, but you are not living your most authentic life, then how are you being, representing, standing in, being truthful about, being a divine being created in the image of God? And we see it time and time again that people won't live their truth, won't speak their truth, won't live their truth. We're all guilty of it one way or another. But once you know, you can't unknow. So I would invite you to be truthful and live your truth, walk in your truth, stand in your truth. And you don't have to stand alone. I'm here with you. Yeah, I'm here with you. I'm holding space for you. I'm holding space for you to speak your truth, to live your truth. So, one of the ways you can honor your truth is if you are feeling led and called to be a Reiki master healer, then honor your truth by going to the link in my bio and getting enrolled. In embody the Reiki master within. It's a six week course. You'll learn a lot. <laughs> I am thorough with my teaching. Um, I'm not boring. I don't believe in giving you a long drawn out uh, lesson. I try to make them easily digestible for you. Right? But I want you in that class. Because I know you want to be there. So, I invite you to join me. Live your truth. Be honest with who you are. And know that great things happen when you embrace your truth and authenticity. Alright, y'all. That's it. That's all I got. Mic drops all around. <laughs> Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I will talk to you again soon. This is Allison Rizel on the Sacred Pathway Academy podcast, and I will talk to you later. Bye for now.